one of the things I'm wondering about beyond the campaigns themselves is, uh, you know, we have a new piece that on the reload talking about the outside groups and their spending. And what's really fascinating to me is that so the NRA has gotten into this race. They're spe- they've spent a couple million dollars at this point on advertising uh, to boost Walker and, and to uh, attack Warnock, uh, which, you know, it makes sense. But but, you know, they're so they're involved. They're spending money. Uh, but at the same time, you're not seeing the gun control groups do any of that. Apparently, they're, they're just not getting involved in this race at all, at least yet, not to this point. Do uh, you have any insight as to why that why that might be? Yeah, I don't know whether it's true that the gun control groups have not gotten involved. I just think that there may be a different strategy going on here. I think a lot of people are asking this question, so we don't know for sure. But it may be that the NRA and gun rights groups nationally are looking to basically reach people through advertising uh, especially, for instance, in sort of far-flung rural districts. And so media and television are important, and that involves a lot of heavy-duty spending really to get any impact at all. You know, if you're going to hit the airwaves, you have to hit them pretty hard. On the other side, it may be that gun control groups are looking more to mobilize urban voters, and they may be, and I've seen this in the press, spending a lot more time just trying to organize volunteers to go out and kind of turn out the vote. I'll just give you an example. You know, we live in a heavily Democratic district in Atlanta, and we've been getting you know, two or three letters a day from people all over the country, people we'd never heard of who are basically writing us personal letters, postcards on the back that says, please turn out to vote in the Georgia elections. And so I think a lot of that effort is being mobilized by progressive groups, including gun control groups, but that's not the kind of spending that you need in order to get advertising. That's kind of community organizing, but I think there's a lot of effort yeah. going in there. Okay, that's interesting. So you're, you're saying that uh, obviously, the way we know wh- whether the groups are spending in races is based off their FEC filings, and you only have to file those reports for certain kinds of activities like buying ads or donating directly to candidates or uh, donating staff time to candidates, campaigns. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to disclose those expenditures if they're just for things like uh, a generic effort to get out the vote that's not you know, a partisan effort, not not an attempt to organize with a camp, particular campaign. But if you're just trying to get your voters out out to vote, that's not necessarily going to show up on an FEC filing. So that that's interesting. So you think they're instead of focusing on ads and mailers or things like that, they're focused on get out the vote operations that are ostensibly nonpartisan. Yeah, I don't even know if they're nonpartisan. I just think a lot of them don't require spending cash. So you know, I think we're getting a lot. I'm getting a postcard a day from some volunteer in Portland, Oregon, or Minnesota, you know, Minneapolis, Minnesota, who's kind of joined up to help the Democratic Party. And they are sending me, they're shooting off, you know, X number of, of postcards to pre, you know, to predetermined addresses in democratically leaning voting districts in Atlanta. And that may not even be a campaign expenditure, although it's a campaign effort. I suspect that gun control groups are mobilizing in this way and that they're playing a role in the campaign. They may just be not be cutting checks in order to do it. Yeah. Um- and and like I said, there are ways you can mobilize voters without having to report to the FEC what you're what you're doing exactly or what you're spending. Um, and so perhaps they're doing that, but it does still seem, you know, whether or not they're doing get out the vote efforts uh, as you described. Like it seems odd to just cede the rest of the ground there to the the NRA. Doesn't well, it? Well, it, it may be that actually that the gun control groups think that. They'd probably be better off not coming out swinging too hard in Georgia on gun control. And then it, mm. they'd probably ra- rather let sort of Walker get out ahead of himself on abortion rights or on his association with Donald Trump. And then, in fact, the best way to advance their cause is to, you know, basically let those other issues play out. Because, as I said, I think everybody knows we're playing for swing voters here at the margin uh, or, or at the base. As they, There may be uh, activities going on in terms of mobilizing the base, but I don't know. And again, all of this is speculation because we don't really have uh, a lot of insight as to sort of what the gun control groups are thinking about in terms of their strategy in this particular race. Mm-hmm. Sure, but we do have the what they're spending money on. And it's For the, sure. Or at least what they're not spending money on. It's a good which question. Is, which is interesting. Uh, well, you know, I, you know, I wonder if they just maybe feel like, I mean, it's certainly, like you said, they have at times... Uh, tried to focus on issues that were more pertinent to a campaign than guns, e- even though they're using funds from their, you know, from Evertown or Giffords, they might run ads that are more about abortion rights than they are about gun restrictions. They, they certainly did that throughout 
the midterm elections, and they've done that in the the 2020 elections as well. With you know focusing on uh, healthcare was was one of the big ones in 2020. They put money into ads that talked about healthcare instead of gun policy, uh, or at least tried to connect the two in some way. They did that a lot with abortion this time around, and so it's interesting to see that they're uh, even if they do believe there's a better strategy to put forth than going hard on gun control in Georgia. They could spend money on those sort of abortion ads or attack ads against Walker for his positions or what have you, and they're just not doing it to this point. Maybe they're saving up uh, time. I mean, that's, there's not a lot of time, uh, right, in these ads, that, in this, these elections. They happen fairly quickly compared to, you know, a, a normal general election. And so, uh, you know, it does make you wonder, like, maybe they just feel like these races are uh, – in hand, like that, maybe they just don't. They don't think Walker can pull off the a comeback. I, I don't know. Does it? Do, do you think maybe they're getting too overconfident, or, or is there yeah, something I else? Yeah, I mean, I, that seems pretty speculative to me. I'm not sure. I would suggest that the gun control advocacy groups think they've sort of way out ahead. If anything, they're playing defense most of the time. And in a state like Georgia, they really haven't made any headway at all. So, uh, as I said, I think their primary strategy is to try and figure out how best to support the. Warnock campaign, and that may not involve sort of heavy duty exposure on the airwaves, especially in rural districts where, you know, he's trying to lower margins that are going to generally go for Walker. Um, so, you know, I couldn't speak exactly to that, but it's also possible that the NRA just has more available disposable cash right now to put into this race and that you know, every town's been running in more places or they just have less disposable income right now to deal with the issue. So that's also hard to know. That is a good point. We did see towards the end of the campaign season when they put in their last filings. We'll, we'll get more information uh, when they're in their post-election filings that come out, uh, I believe, on December 8th. Uh, and we'll, we'll, of course, be covering that and do uh, likely do a whole podcast on everyone's spending. But uh, we did see at the end of the, the midterms that um, the NRA had a much larger stockpile of cash on hand to work with. Uh, they don't seem to have spent most of that money in the closing days of the campaign, whereas, you know, every town in Giffords didn't have money on their books. Of course, you can transfer money's fungible, so you can transfer it around between their different groups, which is all of these gun groups are very competent at. They're all professionals. They know what they're doing with this kind of stuff. But that's a fair point. I mean, it could be that they spent a lot of their money in the general election. They just didn't save up enough for big spends in in this runoff. 